Hi, how are you? And welcome to another time of my favorite. You said it. Did you see I had a brain fart? I had the most epic brain fart. Let's talk about why you're here. This week, y'all, I'm coming at you with another Ask Me Anything. I get so nervous before these, you have no idea. And what helps actually calm my nerves is when people actually respond. So this is me asking you a question of the week. What is your go-to snack? Now, just throw me a bone, like hook a sister up. Let me know what your favorite snack is because it just goes to show and gives an impact so I know who's watching and the conversations we're having. But I don't ask you a question I won't answer myself right now. This is the most boring snack known to all mankind, but I'm telling you, it gives me life. I grab 10 raw almonds. They're not roasted, they are not salted, just raw almonds. I grab 10 raw almonds and a cup of water. I am telling you, it's like brain food. I just feel like I am on fire after that. So speaking of fire, let's get into the Q&A. So the way that this works is that people can ask pre-asked questions on my Facebook page. I will answer those as well as live questions. So if you have a question, I am here to continue this party. Let's start off our first question with Michelle who asks, how do you handle negative comments? hand that somebody else's opinion of you doesn't pay your bills quite honestly I do not care whatsoever what somebody says about me and I have to be very clear and very honest about this because for years I cared I cared so desperately and I didn't know until adulthood that the reason I cared so badly was because I grew up daughter of an immigrant. I was very poor. I grew up obese. I didn't learn how to read until I was 11. For the large majority of my life, I was marginalized. I was on the outside looking in. So then I got to a point in my career, specifically when I started as a photographer and I started creating content. And then what happens is that people are like, wow, Jasmine, this is such great content for photographers, thanks. And then other people, and it would make me feel really good. Like, oh my God, this is so great. I love it. And then other people would leave really negative, mean comments. Like, who are you to share this? This is so stupid. You're wrong. Like, if you don't know what you're talking about, don't say anything. And I am telling you, those comments killed me. They ate me up from the inside out. It wasn't until I had the wild realization, and I am talking about, I don't, y'all, like 2015. 2016, not that long ago, when I had the realization that I need to shut everybody and everything out. When somebody says, oh, hey, Jasmine, I love this content. This is so great. I say, thank you and move on. When somebody says, Jasmine, this sucks. You're terrible. You're ugly. You look like a man. All things that I hear on the monthly. I say, thank you very much. And I move on. I treat positive and negative comments the same. Because if I'm only paying attention to the good stuff and not listening to the bad stuff, I'm living in a pretend world. Now what I do is I realize that somebody else's opinion doesn't pay my bills. But the reason why I continue showing up is that I will show up for the people who want and need what I have to offer. And more specifically, you should show up because there's going to be people who want and need what you offer. Will you be for everybody? No. 
Will you care? You shouldn't. I don't want to listen to the positive or the negative. Because what I'm trying to do is not get an inflated ego around people thinking I'm great or really beating myself when people think I'm, I suck. I am just creating content to find my dream customer. That's it. And I want you creating content to find your dream customer. Why? Because we're in control. We are in control. I refuse to have somebody come into my house, poop on the carpet, leave junk on the walls, and then walk out. No, no, no. Social media is our home. And friends, you can choose to ignore, delete, or block. If somebody comes in and has a negative opinion about what I do, maybe myself or the team will engage with them. But if they come in and they say, say something so truly negative that is offensive to myself or anybody else in this community, guess what? Black and delete, goodbye. Why? Because your page is your country and my page is my country. I get to run it the way that I run it. So if we see disagreement and you don't like my content, cool, I'll just ignore it, maybe I'll engage. But if you say something hella disrespectful, bye. That's it. We are in control and those people will never be a part of our business or want the thing that we do. So we just say thank you and goodbye. Okay, so let's dive into questions. If you have questions, please leave them here. I literally show up every single week only based on the questions that you're asking. If I don't get questions, it means that you guys are doing great and your business is perfect and you don't need any insight. So if I don't hear from you, we just end this chat and we move right along and I wish you well because like you're killing the game. Uh, let's dive into finding the right audience. This is Diane. She says, hi, I'm a children's cooking instructor trying to reach my dream customer on Facebook. Not having much luck, suggestions on how to attract the right audience. Well, before I give an answer for how to attract the right audience, the main question that I have to ask is, do you know who that is? It's not enough to say, oh, my audience is on Facebook. Great. but. Who is that person? Are you trying, no, I'm, I'm assuming, no, I'm making some assumptions. So if I'm wrong, like tell me, um, feel free, like it's cool, I'm wrong. I'm assuming that your target customer is going to be a parent. Because if you're teaching classes to kids, it's not like kids have their own credit card. So you need to attract a parent to invest in your cooking classes for their kid. Now, when it comes down to talking to parents, you really have to get super specific. Are you attracting a city mom or a country mom? Are you attracting the mom of more than three kids, less than three kids? Are you attracting a mom who is 38 or 28? Are you attracting a mom who has a full-time job or doesn't have a full-time job? I mean, those are just like basic questions, basic questions to get you started. Because you can't just say you're creating content for moms because the way that you speak to a mom in the Midwest who's 28 and is a stay-at-home mom, is so different than how you speak to a mom who's 38, a full-time professional woman with only one child on the East Coast, right? Like when you actually get into the psychology of speaking to your customer, we gotta get the basics. Because I know it's tempting for people to say, and you might hear me say it too, is that build it and they will come. But you gotta know who you're talking to first before you build it. And then here's the major caveat is build it and they will come. If you change and iterate on their feedback, they will stay. Build it and they will come. Change and iterate based on their feedback to get them exactly what they want and they will stay. But the only way that this actually comes true and, and, and knowing without a shadow of a doubt is I'm gonna say it again for the people in the back is that you have to know your ideal client. You have to know who you are speaking to or else it just doesn't work. Because once you know who you're speaking to and then you build this idea and then you change and you iterate based on what they want so that they stay, you have a very clear idea of the content that you can create to entertain, 
to educate or to empower. Those are the three E's of creating marketing content on social media. Entertain, educate, or empower. Every time you put something out, you have to say, do I think my dream customer will be entertained, educated, or empowered by this content? If you answer yes, then you already know you're one step in the right direction. Okay, let me know how that feels. Let's dive into a few live uh, questions. Shout out to Sherry for getting the party started. Is it okay to ask clients for pictures of them using your product? Then ask for a testimonial quote, for example, a bride using my vintage horse trailer mobile bar. Oh my gosh, I'm living for this. The answer is yes. The answer is yes, it is okay to ask your clients for a photo and or a testimonial. But here's where I think you can up level your strategy. You'll obviously have to ask the bride, like, hey, can I, can I get a testimonial? She'll give it to you. Now, the minute she gives you a testimonial, you're like, I would love to share this on social media or my website. She's like, great. I believe it's in your best interest to be proactive. I want you to find out who is her photographer and who is her videographer. When you reach out to the videographer and photographer in advance and you introduce yourself and say, hey, I'm Sherry, they're gonna be using this cool vintage trailer. If you can take a photo of the bride in it, I would be more than happy to put it on my website with a link to your website as the contributing photographer or videographer. If a videographer gives you, oh my gosh, like a 30 second clip of the bride getting out of the carriage or the bride and groom getting into the carriage or the bride and her dad descending out of the carriage, you can make all of that content into reels. You can be creating really short reels with your carriage and horse and bride and your videographer and photographer are going to be your best friends. You wanna ask your clients for the testimonial, but you wanna work directly with the vendor. You don't want your bride to say, okay, can you go and ask your photographer? You don't wanna give your bride, you don't wanna give your client another job. Like, she just got married. She wants to be on her honeymoon. She doesn't wanna come back and then all of a sudden be like the distributor of content. You have to be on the front end of that. Okay. Another live question that's coming in. Uh, Carmen, how do I create content for my ideal customer solving their pain points and also incorporate social curator captions? So Carmen, when we go into, we have seven categories on the inside of social curator. We have about me, we have testimonials, right? We have behind the scenes. You're behind the scenes. Let's just say, Carmen, I don't know what you do, but let's just say you are in the fitness profession. You're in a fitness profession and you want to create a behind the scenes video that solves one of their pressure points. Well, if you're in the fitness uh, arena and your client is really interested on in losing the last five pounds of stubborn belly fat, you could do behind the scenes. Be like, hey, I'm about to record a reel about the best workout to lose five pounds in your belly. But what I want to share is that good abs are made in the kitchen, not in the mat. So watch a future video and I'm going to go through and share my top five recipes in addition to the top five workouts. I'll see you soon. That right there was a very short story format that is solving a pressure point. Pressure point being, I wanna lose five pounds. Behind the scenes, I'm about to do a workout, but then the truth of the matter is, more content is coming because abs are made in the kitchen and on the mat. What you're basically doing is speaking to the pressure point and then creating content around it. Also, the social curator uh, captions and our categories, we have uh, the value or benefits of what it is that you do. Those value, Caption templates are really to solve a problem. Behind the scenes, you could totally solve a problem. About me, you could talk about how you solve problems. We just have to contextualize what it is that they are. So Carmen, if you find it helpful, please post a very specific question on the inside of the Facebook group. Now here's the beauty. Courtney is our community manager and she happens just today to be on this live call. Carmen, can you form a very specific question and how you would like me or the team to contextualize your answer and we can go deep in this uh, content on the inside of the private group. Carmen, thank you so, so, so much for being here. I appreciate it. Okay, let's dive into a question. Is success possible? This is from Jennifer. Is success on social media an actual possibility or is it only for the glitzy rich kids? LOL, tough when you're not cool and in your 30s. So, Jennifer, as your homegirl who is not glitzy or cool, I believe the answer is yes. But you should hear my answer and say, I don't care about your opinion. 
And then I would say, good, you're not supposed to. I want you looking at data and analytics. All you need, Jennifer, is to find somebody who is doing what you wanna do, how you do it. So Jennifer, if you're 47 and you're not cool or glitzy and you happen to live in a small town in the middle of nowhere, but you see somebody else who's 47-ish living in the middle of nowhere and able to find success on social media. If you can find one other person, the answer is it could be done. But here's the underlying question that I just wanna come out with like a bazooka gun. I'm gonna answer your question in a tactical way in a second. But what is your definition of success, Jennifer, and anybody else who's watching? What's your definition of success? Because you ask, can I be successful on social media? Well, how you define success and how I define success might be different. Because if you're defining success as I have a million followers and I, I get free product, I get people talking back to me. If that is your version of success, I don't know. I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if it's possible to get your version of success. But first and foremost, it's gonna be important for you to define success. I know that you could reach my version of success because I've defined it. My version of success on social media is not how many followers I have. It's not how many comments I have. It's not how many DMs I get. It's not how many pitches I get to like, we'll send you free product. That's not success to me. Success to me on social media is, am I truly connecting with a small group of people who are pushing my business forward? If that then becomes your barometer of success, am I successfully getting people to buy the thing that I want, that I'm selling on social media? If that's your version of success, I could tell you all day, every day, and twice on Sunday, you can get that level of success if you show up with a strategy. So very similar to how Carmen asked her question, can I use the resources? How do I use them on the inside of Social Curator? Like I get sick and tired of being sick and tired of people, number one, not having the ability to fully identify what success looks like for them and instead are looking at vanity metrics. So just in case Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, whatever platform disappears tomorrow, all of a sudden the people that were quote unquote successful on those platforms, are they truly successful if the thing that they are dependent on goes away? If the answer is, if it goes away, they're no longer successful, then I just question the veracity of that level of success because success is foundational. Success is something you own outside of a singular platform. I believe we should use platforms to push our business forward, not be the business themselves. Sorry, I went on a bit of a tangent, but I just have to come out and say that success is possible for anyone, but it requires work. It requires the knowing of your ideal client. It requires consistency. It requires you defining your level of success. And just in case you ever doubt it's actually possible for you, the only thing you need to do is find one other person who is doing what you want to do in somewhat of a similar stratosphere. If you could find one other person on the internet who's your version of success doing what you wanna do with your quote unquote limitations, being too old, being too young, being too fat, being too skinny, being too black, being too white, whatever it is. If you can find another person who is doing what you wanna do given the same resources and circumstances, then clap it up. It is possible for you. I can't tell you how many people I have seen on TikTok and Instagram who are over 70 with millions of followers because they're cool. Oh yeah, they live in like the coolest retirement home. <laughs> oh, they get the best groceries delivered. Their trips to the chiropractor are riveting. No, they're just interesting. They find a way to keep you, the viewer, captivated in what it is, whatever it is that they were doing. Oftentimes, the biggest viral celebrities that came out of the pandemic are a couple living together, sharing their grievances or their annoyances with each other. It's possible. If we've seen it done once, we could see it again for ourselves. Because we must remember, 
that good content is good content. That's it. The market is never wrong, even if we want to put parameters around what we could or should be doing. Okay, so Izzy Fowler asks IG guides how to make those. Y'all, I created a two minute how to tutorial. If you go to Instagram at Jasmine Star and you click on my IGTV, I have an IGTV entitled how to use Instagram guides for your business. I walk you through the process. You will see that I now am consistently making guides. And here's an update y'all. Facebook is adding guides to pages. So what I'm doing is I want to work smarter, not harder. And I think to myself, what is the system or plan that I'm using to create Instagram guides? I share it in the video. And now I just, I had, in fact, I talked to Courtney this morning and I was like, Hey, Facebook has guides. Now let's start getting some of my Facebook posts and putting them into a guide so people can get the content that they want faster. So check it out. Uh, Mitch Elred, how do you balance feedback and criticism from your audience to drive improvement and change while also staying true to your goals and message? So very great question, Mitch. I love it. Now I want to pinpoint one thing you just wrote, and I'm just going to use your words as a mirror, holding it back to you. How do you balance feedback and criticism? Well, Mitch, I'm going to be honest with you. If somebody is criticizing me, I plug my ears. But if somebody is saying something glowing or positive, I also close my ears. I said this at the beginning of this conversation. If somebody is criticizing me, the definition of a criticism just simply says what, the, what you're doing wrong. When somebody critiques you, they say, here's what I think you could be doing better. So if clients and users of Social Curator are coming to me and they're saying this would make our experience better. This would be helpful. I would use the tool more. Do you know, Mitch, we don't have one, we don't have two, we have three ways of aggregating information from our users. Why? I am desperate to get better. I freaking love when somebody says, have you thought about this? Have you considered this? What if you tried this? To me, I have a laundry list of freaking amazing ideas from people who are not criticizing, but critiquing. I thrive on the critique. So how do you balance staying true to your goal and getting a critique? Well, if my goal is to become rich, I don't know if I really want to listen to critiques unless the critiques help me make more money. If my goal is to become uh, really important or famous, then I don't need to listen to the critique unless the critiques are helping me get more famous. I can tell you, Mitch, that my goal is to build a business that empowers other business to make six figures before 2023. My goal is to empower business owners to make six figures by 2023. That's my goal. So when I get a critique of, hey, Jasmine, this is how we think Social Curator would be better, I then measure it on my goal. Will this critique help them get to six figures faster? If the answer is yes, I put it in front of the development team and I said, ladies and gentlemen of the development team, we need to make this happen. So I, let's give you a real example, Mitch. We kept on hearing from our users, Jasmine, we love the caption templates because it teaches us how to talk about social media, but we need a way to mark off that we've been done. We need a way to mark our favorites. We need a way to edit them in the app. I heard that again and again. You want to know what we did? We said that feature dropping in June. People said, Jasmine, I love the photos, but I need this type of photo. Well, put it in front of the dev team because I heard it again and again, and we got a full over 3,000 images in a gallery that people can have access to. No, I'm not pitching social security because we're in closed enrollment. So Mitch, I'm actually using examples to explain how I am using a critique in relation to my goal. And the goal becomes the barometer of what I listen and how I engage and how I react. I love critiques. I want to get better all the time. Mitch, if you have an idea of how we can make these live videos and later we repurpose on like LinkedIn or YouTube and you have a way for me to make this better, tell me. You have a direct line to me at Jasmine Star on Instagram. Hit me up. I'll respond to you.
If you are a user of Social Curator and you have an idea of how you can make our platform better, you have a direct line to me, at Jasmine Star on Instagram, help at socialcurator.com. I read all of those emails that come in, not all of them, the vast majority of the emails that come in. We have a Slack channel that anytime somebody has a piece of feedback, it goes into that Slack channel, I read every single one of them. Every month, I have a task for me as the owner to go into the business and say, what's really sucking right now? What do we need to fix? It is an honor and a privilege to get my arse kicked by users who want to make us better. I say yes and thank you for every piece of feedback we've ever gotten, but it's also a frame of mind. It's also a state of being. I don't wanna be stagnant. I wanna be on the cutting edge of serving users so far and so beyond what they imagine. So they have no other option but to stay and say yes and thank you. Okay, right, let's get into uh, Elizabeth. What do you think gets the most attention to leave customers to your website? Oh, to lead customers to your website. Reels, videos, posts. Elizabeth, honestly, I'm agnostic. I am agnostic about the mechanism, what we call like the medium, the medium. I am agnostic. I don't give a rip. I, I can't say, oh, it's definitely video. Oh, it's definitely a post. It's definitely a reel. It's gotta be the story. I never, ever, ever say, that's the thing you need to be doing. Why? Because if the content sucks, the content sucks. If I said reels are the best thing to get people to your website, but you're like, your reels suck, then that's not the answer. The, the, the question we should, we should be asking is number one, am I willing to test a bunch of different ideas and then let the data and analytics do the talking? And then number two, am I willing to get uncomfortable with the results? Because you know, some people don't want to be on video. They say, I will never be on video. So if I said, oh, video is the way you got to go and it's just totally out of alignment with you, you're going to feel like crap. Now I can't be successful. Listen, there are, I believe that there are people who could be successful on social media, freaking using smoke signals, using messenger pigeons. I do. I really, I, I'm not even joking. I really believe it. Like I, <laughs> there's this guy on TikTok. I hate, I hate that his videos come up because I turn and I'm obsessed with him. He has these doves that he's trained for funerals. He's like this Latino guy who is a professional dove trainer. He makes videos of these doves and he teaches them what he's doing at a funeral. So it's like, it's really poor taste. I can't even like, I'm actually mad that I admitted that I watch his videos because they're a little inappropriate. But who would have thought that a guy who's younger than 20, who trains doves for funerals can have hundreds of thousands, over millions of followers on TikTok, on videos around funeral doves. If that guy can do it, you can do it. But he's comfortable on video. He's comfortable on TikTok. You might be saying, but I am a great writer and like writing isn't really meant for social media. You'll find an audience, you will. But if you're saying, Jasmine, no, I'm willing to do anything to get the most attention on my website. If you're saying that, then you gotta test everything. Test going live, test a video more than one minute, like on IGTV, test a video under a minute, test on stories, test a written post, test a live video, test a reel, test a live going on with somebody, test a live doing Q and A, like legitimately test all the things and test all those things at least three times each so you can go back and get data and analytics of what is actually pushing. And then once you have data and analytics, that's not enough because you actually have to test. This is my assumption. My assumption, my suspicion is that if I do X, Y, and Z, it's gonna get more traffic to my site. Then you have to test it and you have to test that three times over. And people often say, Jasmine, it feels like social media is a second full-time job. Well, I would rather have two full-time jobs that I like that are serving my own than being in a job for somebody else that I don't like. But hey, that's my opinion. That might not be you and that's totally cool. But if you're hungry and you're willing, it's time for us to get to testing. Speaking of testing, every single week I show up on Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and Instagram, on Clubhouse, on LinkedIn, I'm creating content, not for me. I'm gonna go back to what Mitch had said. 
How do you balance getting critiqued or criticism in relation to your goal? My goal is to build a business that gets business owners to six figures by 2023. Some people think it's crazy. I think it's doable. So I create content to point people to my dream. And my dream is to build a SaaS company called Social Curator to give business owners the resources that they need to stop making small excuses for their big dreams. I need people to take big action that maps to their big dreams. We are in closed enrollment. This ain't a pitch. This is me just showing up and reminding myself that if I don't talk about my dream, nobody else will. If I don't clap for how far I've come, nobody else will clap for how far I've come. If I don't just take a minute to pat myself on the back and say, you know what, girl? You have nothing. You aren't funded. Statistically, you should fail and you're still doing it anyway. If I don't say that to myself, nobody else will. And on this day, if you are watching this video and nobody has told you, good job, honey, for showing up. If nobody has looked at you and said, keep going because nobody else will believe in you, but you got this, that's me today. If nobody is standing on a corner, standing in the bleachers while you're in the arena, clapping you up, I am here to do that for you. If nobody has reminded you that you got air in your lungs and your heart is beating and your brain is pulsating and you got a chance to do something to get you closer to what it is that you want, you ain't got that person, that is me today. May the width of my shoulders and may the depth of my soul and may the size of my big brain continue to push you forward. Why? So you push other people forward. May your success, may your results silence the doubts of other people who say you won't make it happen. Why? I'm trying to do the same thing. Every single day on days where I feel like I got the air punched out of me, I got my tooth kicked out and other people are saying, I don't know about this girl's idea. And I still keep pushing forward. I do that as a testament to prove to other people what is possible. That a nobody from nowhere with no resources can do something to leave the world a little bit better. That's my mission. Thank you very, very, very much. Like always, it is an honor and privilege to stand and walk the journey alongside you. I hope you have a beautiful day. If you found this video helpful, tag a friend, pass it along, share it out on social. Much love and gratitude. Bye, friends.